Welcome back to another Linux Themecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux theming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Um, Vulcan. It's a cool, cool technology. And Rust is technically a game, and they've tried to use it probably in the most incompetent way possible. And Humble 20 has hopped onto the scene, so you can pay what you want for a bunch of cool games, except for one that's kind of weird that I really didn't want to buy for reasons. More on that at 11. Coming soon, a story about missed release dates. Actually, you know, it fucking will do it later. And Linux gets some more free games, but is it a good thing? Valve sacked some people. Spool up that rumor mill, kids. And Kitty Digest tells us all about the easiest way to game on Linux. Yeah, it's one of those articles. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm frantically looking for buttons because a lot of things are in different places and I can't see half the things. Um, I'm Vin Stone. Joining us live from next to near scale in a bungalow mm-hmm. hidden pa- pa- Pasadena. In Pasadena, which is like right on top of scales, hovering above it. That's Jordan Swing. Yeah. And you know him, you love him. That's Pedro in Britannia on the island with his Heineken. Mm-hmm. With his Heine. Yes. <laughs> and you down there in bottom, Shadow Realm Dynamics, joining us live for this very special, not really, but it's still kind of special episode of Linux Gamecast Weekly. Uh, before we get started, we like to see what's going on. I'll just go ahead and fucking say... Not much. Can't think of anything that's happened here. Pretty much the same old. No. No. Mm-mm. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything's changed. No. No. It's no. No. no, no. no. It's, it's a, this show brought to you by Acer. <laughs> Technically, you can't see it in this shot. Dying of fire, man. Uh, right. So that th- this this happened. <laughs> it's so huge. That's so big. That's a you, big you look ass like thing. Wilson. <laughs> I, you look like Wilson from Home Improvement. Dude, all right, a couple of things. I've said something this monitor that will never be said to me, and it's, you're too big. Um, <laughs> <laughs> too real, man. Too, too real. real. Right? Uh, yeah, I, I picked this up for, like, why did you end up with this? I didn't want this. I wasn't looking for something like this. It was $308 all in. Yeah, that's, that's yeah good for a for monitor that. that big, that's pretty good. Yeah, pretty damn good. <laughs> uh, certified refurbished and all that. Da da da. They're normally like six hundred bucks. Uh, pretty happy with it. I, this is not where it's going to be. This is like fuck it. I'm gonna do one episode like that plus the floor stand for it. So that's gonna be a thing. Uh, it works. It's pretty nice. It's kind of glossy, and I'm like one of those shallow bastards that would gauge how well his life was going by the size of the monitor, because I know if, like, boom, if I boot back in time, uh, like, 2005, you're like, oh, shit, future event? How big's the monitor? And if I would have said, you know, what this other monitor here is, like, 28, 28.5, I'm like, well, shit, I guess life's going very well. However, however, if I boot back in time to 2005, and it's like, so, future event, how big's the monitor? 43 inches. I would look at other Vin and go, be quiet, drugs. <laughs> Did you hit the lottery? Or... <laughs> it's ridiculous, but it's going to let us. Is, we now have the screen real estate to bring on guests, which we're going to be doing Wednesday. Uh, I think Chibs is going to be our sacrificial test lab. Plus, I'm learning a lot of things, not to worry about automation, and I'm waiting for it to bite me in the ass. There, that was long. Boring. Give me something exciting, <laughs> Jordan. All right, let, let, me, let me tell you about my new best friend that I met at a grocery store called Ralph's. Um, <laughs> yes. So we're, we're going to get food for breakfast because we got a dozen freaking As opposed to house. what for breakfast? Uh, <laughs> it's California. Yes. You know exactly what. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and, 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 anyways, yeah, there's... Um, yeah, so so we're we're gonna get eggs and shit. There's a dozen of us, uh, and we're we're going through the house. We're at the checkout line, and I look up, and fucking full on crackhead. He's like voguing in the middle of the freaking grocery store. You like try to get back in the car? Oh no, no. <laughs> Strider, Strider was there too. He was like, oh. Oh man, yeah, no, it, was, it was it was pretty great. Um, no, uh, all the scale stuff's been going on. I guess I, I have the segment. And the internet with the poop. You blinked. You're good. <laughs> I blinked. You're uh, good. Let's, let's, all right. It's, I, I have minimal control over the technical issues here. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so that, yeah. Um, scale's been going all right so far. Went to a couple talks. Uh, shilled for Lutris for a couple days. And 
yeah, I got to hang out with some cool people, and I'm waiting on my steak, which MT has quite literally drowned in Montreal steak uh, spice. Hmm. So that's going to be fun. You can take the boy very, out of Jersey. Uh, Pedro, Canadian. what's up? <laughs> uh, over here, uh, well, my uh, my vacation's coming to an end, and I finished Fallout 4, 150 hours in, give so, or take. So how, how many times do you think you could have walked to the Raspberry Pi store and back during that time? Uh, probably about 75 times. <laughs> <laughs> Give or take. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I didn't go there because I was just lazy. <laughs> Pretty much. LGC cares. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Well, so what's the so horse I'm, I'm, up to I'm, this week, baby? I mean, I mean, the horse has not shown their face in California. I'm a little disappointed. I guess we may have to do it without them. It's the Steam oh, Update of the Week. So, uh, we've talked about this a little bit vis-a-vis um, -vis the problem with listing release dates for games on Steam. You're not really beholden to them. And uh, this article from uh, Th uh, Threadreader, I was about to say Thread Rip Rap, but it's Thread Rip Rap, <laughs> uh, is going on about how um, various companies are abusing it. And while a lot of these things are just like, oh, we, we missed our release date, because that's, that's, a really, that's a real thing that happens in software. Um, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of um, developers who are abusing the this to get to the top of the new releases chart, and it's actually pushing newer games down, so they're not getting as much exposure as before. And uh, yeah, this this uh, art article just laments about it, and it it is a pretty rough practice. Um, just and like, there's not really much you can do about it because missing release dates are a thing that happened in software projects. So how 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 do you verify that it's like done in good faith or not? Hmm. Yeah, we've seen this done a few times and games that set a release date and then they either forget that they set that release date and they hit a bit of a snag so they're going to have to delay and then they don't change it. Or people doing so deliberately to drive up interest or if they have, say, a money gathering campaign going on. It's like, oh, this putting more eyes on it because the game is coming up and people click on it and it's like, ooh. They're getting money. This looks interesting, so we'll give them more money. It's, yeah, it, it's kind of a crappy situation. One of the things I genuinely don't like about it is I, I understand the thought, the mentality behind it, the thought process of like, hey, man, it's free promotion. I'll just bump my game, you know, goose it just a little mm -hmm. bit, and it'll get it in front of everybody. The problem is like the ninth time you've done that, people get tired of your shit. And mm -hmm. that one particular game, which I know we've covered on the show, which kind of looked like rocket cars, but you play with like actual people running around or some shit like that. You know the one. I'm talking yeah. About. yeah. 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 <laughs> they even have a thread in their forums where I'm actively participating of every time they do it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so yeah, stop doing that, man. Come on guys. It's Come not, on. All right. It's not, it's not cool. Beta beta. Yeah. Okay, so there was a new update for the Steam Client beta. If you're on the betas, you probably saw this coming a couple of days ago. And it uh, it has a few things. It has updates to the shared installer content now being listed under Steamworks Common Redistributables, uh, which, if you have a look at your library, it, they're actually showing up there now, and Proton now shows up as an installed tool. <laughs> Uh, the, they improved broadcasting, but that doesn't work on Linux, so fuck that. Uh, they enabled the Vulkan pipeline dumping and collection if shader pre-caching is enabled, so that's good. And, finally, for Linux specific, you don't see that very often, they have fixed more instances of zero-byte downloads and missing Proton or data files for Steam Play titles, and they've added the Steam Play configuration settings in big picture mode. Took you long enough, but it is very welcome. When I put together the uh, Steam box, it's now being used as Nori's PC, but uh, when I put that together, I actually had to log in as the Steam user to a desktop session to enable that, and then I could resume and just have it set up as a proper uh, Steam yeah. big picture mode type of thing. Yeah, Va Va Valve has a big problem with UI inconsistency because, like, realistically, anything you should be able to do in desktop mode, you should be able to do in big picture mode and vice versa. We were yeah, this but that's not the we're case. Trying to set up <laughs> Yeah, we were trying to we were trying to set up multiplayer games, and in order to do this per controller Steam controller configuration stuff, you have to be in big picture mode, which is really mm -hmm. annoying because we're trying to play speedrunners or um, 
or uh, Mortal Kombat or uh, Ultimate Chicken Horse. And yeah, it's just a pain in the ass to get that all up and running. Also, Strider has some weird Xbox DRV or not uh, Xpad issues. So that might that might have also been causing it. Well, um, I mean, it's really good to see the proton settings in big picture because, hey, yeah. that is, I honestly think that like Steambox version two is going to be fuck it. We play everything. <laughs> And Maybe it'll be an actual yeah. Valve Steam box. This that's, time. that's the only way that's going to happen, sweetheart. <laughs> Nobody's getting back into the hardware. Nope. Mm-mm. All right. So mm-hmm. we got to talk about it. it We'd be remiss if we didn't. It, so uh, it's, it's, skip it's, ahead for it's, three it's minutes two- if you don't want to hear about that game. Yeah. So it's it's the two hundred it's the two hundred ton elephant in the room. Yeah. Uh, so rape day, it's a game where the guy's like, well, murder, murder's been like, uh, destigmatized. I want to do that with rape and not getting into the issues of why murder and rape are very different things and should be handled very differently in media. Um, this is basically just one giant PR stunt this guy was trying to do. He's like, oh, look, mm-hmm. look at me. This is edgy. It's on Steam. I'm going to get a lot of outrage and then I'm going to use that to funnel people to buy my game. Um, and I mean... Steam has no reason to not allow this sort of behavior to happen because they remove games ad hoc. And as long as people are still giving them a hundred dollars a game, it it does it doesn't really doesn't really matter to them, right? If if it if it uh, drums up some controversy, they'll just delist the game and no no skin off their back, right? Yeah. <laughs> And with Valve's relatively lax approach w- on what gets to be on Steam, I mean, you just pay a hundred bucks, uh, it's inevitable that people would try their luck with just about anything. And, well, we had this. It's like, okay, I'll pay a hundred bucks and I'm going to put my game that's about, you know, murder, uh, rape, and just about everything else that's wrong with society. We're going to put that up there. And, yeah, it wasn't until... You know, the bad press started coming in that Valve went, okay, we're not having that. It's something that made me step back and go, Valve, you know, you'll seriously need to fucking rethink your wait until public outrage policy. You can't have it both ways. You know you can. Quit pretending you can. The, oh, it's hands off until it can't be hands off. This is some bullshit shouldn't have shown up. All right. You know it. I know it. The fucking entirety of the rest of everything knows it, too. You fucked up mm-hmm. on that. Um, and the really sad thing is, is it made it through Steam Direct? The, yeah. Somebody, I mean, I don't know. Because, like I said, Valve has no incentive to not do anything, to not do something, right? Um, yeah. they, they'll they take the $100 and they'll delist the game. No, doesn't matter. Yeah. And they seem content with only doing curation if enough of a fuss is raised. So we're going to see this happening a lot more. Uh, Get ready. And and, and, and it's going to get much, much worse. Much, much worse. Yeah. All right. Uh, What's up next? Oh, speaking of Valve, uh, you know, uh, they had to let go of 13 employees. And a couple of them were uh, VR engineers. A couple of them, uh, well, a few more of them worked in the hardware uh, projects. And uh, the Team 3 Donkeys, uh, which was responsible for uh, Artifact, were also included in this particular project. round of uh, people being laid off which it's kind of a bad move considering that we've been hearing um over uh, like in the industry as a whole that people have been uh, getting laid off to keep profit margins up and whatnot and uh, yeah someone actually sent Gabe Newell an email and he replied this was a people thing uh so Whatever that means, we don't know. It's Valve. They don't owe any explanation to any public investors because they're a private company. They can basically do what they want with their employees. And as long as those people are, you know, getting, they can find a job doing whatever they want to do. That's great. That's cool. But, yeah, Ved, you actually brought up a good point in the it's show. a couple notes. of things. One of the big points I want to make is these were not contract workers. These were full-time Valve employees. Um, yeah, there were a couple of contract workers, but those weren't the three donkeys team. <laughs> you got to look at it like this is, this is kind of like 
not just me, but a lot of people have been saying for the past couple of years and not throwing any shade on the technology. We got to go through these uh, steps, but, you know, I, I blame the face fucking toasters, the VR. Mm -hmm. it, it's not there yet. I mean, I don't know if it was necessarily ready to be productized. However, it could just be that maybe it wasn't really VR. Maybe we just now know how many people were on the artifact team. Question mark. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I mean, if, if if it is hardware engineers, I think it more has to do with the fact that Valve may have overestimated their ability to sort of pick up the HTC side of the equation when it came to the VR hardware. Um, that 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 could be another thing, right? They weren't prepared for the financial or technical burden mm. um, because they, yeah, that, that that that's the real thing that happens. Companies bite off way yeah. more than they can chew. Well, I mean, um, even rolling with that topic, uh, with like Artifact Man, what was his name? Garfield. No longer Richard, yeah, Richard, Richard Garfield, Garfield creator yeah. of MDG. <laughs> That's kind of a big thing, though. But I mean, this is more directly related to Artifact, though, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, um, Richard Garfield and Three Donkeys team were the gameplay designers. Uh, Richard Garfield does a lot of pure game design. Um, and so, yeah, of, of course, if you're going to try and build a Magic the Gathering Hearthstone competitor, you probably want to get his input in on it. Um, and based on based on this interview, it doesn't seem like there are any hard feelings. They came in to design a game. They designed the game. No one no one wanted to buy it, mm -hmm. and so they gotta cease the relationship. I mean, it's a little sad because Garfield is actually a really solid game designer, and it looked like the at least mechanically. I don't know about complexity wise, but mechanically, the artifact game seemed relatively sound. But sometimes even the best design games don't resonate with folks, or yeah. at least cause them to drop cash on booster packs. This is true. 100%. And, you know, and I'm not being mean at all, not in the slightest, but I genuinely, honestly believe in the dark crevice where my heart should be, that people who are interested in making games don't actively look for a job at Valve. That doesn't seem like no. logically where you would go to, like, even the people who show up there, we'd like to make a game. And then there's people that have been there for two decades who are like, we've been trying to make a game. It just doesn't work <laughs> in a flat management structure. Yeah, so set, yeah, setting and... deadlines is important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, it seems that with Artifact failing so hard and so quickly, it became apparent that some people were better off looking for work somewhere else. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. You're just angry because your dreams of VR Artifact have been dashed. I don't have a VR headset. I don't want a VR headset. That's why he's it, so salty if you had a VR headset. No, no, no. See, 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 Pedro, I know, I know as a TCG player in your heart of hearts, you want the IRL Yu-Gi-Oh shit where you can, like, play cards and holograms show up. At one point, I kind of wanted that. Nowadays, I think I'm over it. Okay. No, no. If, 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 if they had a good implementation of that, you'd be all over that shit. Oh, about yeah, we get all if, over if the, it uh, was a really good implementation, then yeah, sure. How about <laughs> we get over the new version of Proton, but it comes with thousands of new features. Oh, yeah. It's a brand new <laughs> day for Proton. They hit the um, 3, 16, 18 is out. Um, yeah, they updated the DXVK to 1.0. Okay. okay, seriously? Right. All right. Who else read this, went to this web zone, looked at it, and said they didn't put any... Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's like, I, I, where I did, the release notes? Oh. <laughs> I, I, I mean, to be fair, that's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a fairly big chunk. And it, kudos on them for getting like a sub-week turnaround time on after uh, DXVK hitting a 1.0 and them pushing this update out. But mm -hmm. This is um, true. This is true. Um, that was it. I'm kind of on team. Like, wh why don't we get like wine four point something or another? Uh, yeah, they, they gotta re yeah. They gotta re they, they'd have to rebase all of their Steam input stuff. It's, it, I, I'm a little calm eventually. I know. I'm expecting too much out of a scrappy little upstart like them. Uh, mm -hmm. listen, I they, mean, they don't. Who are these they don't set people? deadlines. <laughs> they don't set deadlines, and so nothing gets done. Well, hey, this is the beautiful thing about Valve is, uh, hey, we're supporting Proton uh, for this week mm -hmm. too. That's that's good. They They're still it. supporting it. They updated the XVK to 1.0, which, you know, uh, I finished, uh, like I mentioned at the top of the show, I finished Fallout 4. And if there's one thing that 316.8 did for Fallout 4 is it got rid of uh, the micro centering in most mm. places. There's, It's still there. If you're looking for it, it's still there. But um, the really glaring ones, it's gone. So, yeah, good on them. <laughs> awesome. 
So, okay. winner, winner, chicken dinner. Game updates. Oh, yes. So, if you were paying attention on Friday, myself and uh, Ven uh, played a little bit of uh, Chicken Horse. Yeah. Jeez, really? And I'm, I'm trying to forget. <laughs> we also had uh, Foxy and Arthur and join us for that. And it was, uh, well, it was good. There was no weird crashing like the last time we tried it. Uh, the, I was also positively surprised that the DualShock 4, it just worked out of the box. And they even showed the little DualShock 4 drawing with all the controls and everything else. So that was really nice to see. Uh, they have uh, this update is mostly about skins oh my God, for characters. Oh my robot monkey. Yes, they have a so robot yeah, monkey. Yeah. They have... An axolotl. They, they, got they an have axolotl. a not robot bunny. <laughs> I, 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 I think I think a couple of these are alternate skins. The other the other big update here is um, they gave you the option to screw around with a lot of the core mechanics, like uh, how mm-hmm. many jumps you can do within a single jump, the height, uh, friction for wall jumps, and all sorts of weird things just to make your friends miserable. Um, actually, actually, uh, Strider Empty and I were playing a little bit of this uh, earlier in the week as well, and yeah, check it checks out. Yeah, it has new modifiers for just about everything that's a game mechanic. So if you really want to screw with people, you can. <laughs> if, if, you, if you want to take the Venstone Rocket League approach to Ultimate Chicken Horse, <laughs> they got your back. <laughs> it works, man. Uh, it was interesting because, like, not Friday, but the last time we tried to play that, it was just crashing to the point of laughter. Like, all right, mm-hmm. we give up. But we went back mm-hmm. and played, you know, even the custom levels. They, no. they were just fine. <laughs> no issues. Yeah. So, I mean, good on them. Uh, and they've been updating. I mean, I keep thinking it's an early access, but it's not. It's been released for yeah. a while. No, it, it, it's, it's out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, well, it's, it's funny because we covered them when they're in Kickstarter and they actually, they're one of the few games that actually released. Right. Yeah. In a genuinely good game with online multiplayer support. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right, uh, Pedro. Come on. It. Yeah. Well, it's fast dust. It's been out for a while for Windows, but it's now available on Linux and Mac OS. And it's like, ooh, racing game for Linux and Mac OS. I, okay, I like let's have a look the at this. Tux Penguin, and then they have the Apple gonna sue somebody. <laughs> <Mac OS>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Apple can sue us for that. Uh, no, it's just, I went. It's like clicked on the store page button and I went through, I looked at the video and I looked at the screenshots. It's like, uh, don't judge a book by the cover, I guess, but it's very hard when the cover, you know, especially where Steam is concerned, has been very elucidating in the past. Uh, I, so you would rather I, just make assumptions about it? You couldn't be asked to download no, the free no, demo? No, 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 no. <laughs> there is a free demo. I didn't actually try it. I did send them an email. So if they, uh, well, I couldn't find their email. They have a contact form on their website. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, sure it's like, off. okay. I mean, who would just have a contact form? They should have emails. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, we'll get to that in a couple of segments. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, it the like the racing itself and the physics and the way that the cars collide and things that all looks fine. It's just everything else. It looks a bit drab. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's it, just it, me. It kind of <laughs> it, it looks just like a generic racing game. That was my only thought. Um, yeah. 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 I'm not against <laughs> it. Uh, 20 bucks. Oh, no, I, uh, more racing games. <laughs> I'd never heard about it. It's got uh, multiplayer and online multiplayer. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless that shit's hidden behind, like, the built-in Unity matchmaking system, that could be interesting. In Which before. Which wouldn't surprise me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 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 Pedro just plays uh, uh, right, all so- these pixel games that look like dog shit and listening to him going, something's not pretty. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Uh, so, 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 G- Gary has an update. Gary's yeah. got a thing, man. Rust, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a game... That was on Linux, then still technically is on Linux, just not supported. Uh, Caveman Penis, you might have remembered it uh, from a while back. So many dicks. Vulcan in the middle, <laughs> they write, Linux and Mac were using a rather old version of OpenGL, you don't say. Um, so Force OpenGL no longer works. It's going to be using Vulcan and Metal on Mac. Uh, that's kind of it. Until you try to do it. it Until you download it. Then you try to play it. And it, I mean, they have really dramatically increased the performance of this game. 
even on my Ryzen 1700 with a 2060 at 1080p, it was struggling to hit 60 in a lot of places. And okay, that's fun. However, now lightning lightning speed it crashes immediately to the desktop i mean i've not seen it move this fast in the history of ever however <laughs> however this is face punch studios kids so it is nigh impossible to know whether or not that results from incompetence or just trolling now you do get an error <laughs> with a foreseeing well. gfx device vulcan da -da 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 -da, shaders not be available basically that means they ship this without the vulcan back in it wasn't yeah, they didn't build the Linux backend for Vulkan. Kudos. <laughs> I mean, it's not... Yeah, you already mentioned it. It's not like they're pretending to support Linux anymore. They even removed the uh, the Linux or the Steam logo from the... Um, Steam OS logo from the store page. So, you know, Hanlon's Razor never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. So I wouldn't be... You know, entirely surprised if just someone just forgot. It's like, oh, we kind of need that. Oops. Mm. <sighs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's what that error message even means, but... Um, According to oh, Unity's oh, oh, documentation, oh, oh, oh. it does. What, what, what do we got? Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> Some chuggy chicken. Some chuggy chicken. All right. All right. Thank, Lovely. Thank, 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 thank you, Paul. Um... <laughs> I, 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 get, I get delivery service. There's a salad here. All right. No tomato in it New either. games coming up. Deep Knot 6. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, this this is a game. It has cinematics like Final Fantasy VIII and gameplay like Final Fantasy VI. Final Fantasy VIII uh, cinematics look uh, miles better than that. <laughs> I, listen, you have some fucking rose-tinted glasses about Final Fantasy VIII, man. That looked like dog shit on the PlayStation. It just looked good for the time. But anyways, um, yeah, th this is a this is a JRPG sort of inspired by Final Fantasy. Um, and they're, they're going so far as to steal a bunch of their aesthetics. Uh, there's no price announced. Um, so hopefully they don't shoot, them in the, shoot themselves in the foot with their gun blade and price it over ten bucks. Uh, but it's, it's coming soon. I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, it really does look like they've genuinely captured the PS1 aesthetic, but I'm not necessarily saying that's a good thing. No, and I am kind of curious because uh, the, they do have the sexual content on the tags there. And since the game isn't out yet, that was the game developer that put that particular tag there. And there is a succubus looking screenshot person uh, somewhere. So, and uh, your character actually is pondered uh, whether or not to take the uh, pennies with the uh, the hearts. So, this is clearly someone's fanfic. <laughs> Final fanfic scene? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Before we get out of here, uh, a little bit of character blindness with Deceiver, where you can launch your spider bros or your spider drones at walls, ceilings, enemy heads, and whatever, move and attack, and da 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 da. There's nothing about this game, but hey, man, it's not even available. It's just about yeah. for Linux. Yeah. I don't know. It's got online multiplayer, so maybe we can look forward to that. There's a demo. There is a demo. It's, appar <laughs> it's, yes. it's apparently all done in. Uh, it's apparently all done in OpenGL, even window, even the Windows version. So that's a thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. It. Uh, I don't know. It. Maybe we'll try. Maybe we won't. I'm not 100. Yeah. percent Kind of like but, Tron. Like I said. I a, a, a little, a little bit, yeah. I, I'm always interested when, like, um, when when they start using OpenGL on Windows, right? Because hopefully that means that, like, you're not going to get any major performance hits when you when you get the Linux port. Either that, or it's going to run like Universal, but yeah, it's just going to run this like. Is, crap this, is, this is also the possibility. <laughs> yep. Mm. All right. Well, yep. coming up next, uh, I introduce you to Isabel and. Uh, we talk about the latest Humble Bundle and some rabbit food. And despite everything that's happening today, we still need to do a little bit of shilling for ourselves because, well, as it turns out, you lot are awesome, but we want more awesome people to, uh, you know, make this more, I more. guess. <laughs> we yeah. want more awesome people to give us more awesome money because it's all, awesome. All the awesome. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if, you, if you want to be one of those aforementioned people, you should head on over to 
uh, linuxgamecast.com. Click the support button. Da -gum. We got Dagom, 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 Dagom. Yeah, um, yeah. We, we got we got all sorts of links you can click. Um, shit, I forgot which one we're doing next. Is it the store? Yes. Yes. No. Yes, it is the store. Yeah, we, we're, give, we're giving a couple of the stickers out uh, here at scale. But if you want some of these for your own, or maybe you just want a Hell Elks mayonnaise shirt uh, or a coffee mug, you can go to our uh, Teespring and buy a bunch of those and cover your awful, awful shame. Here's uh, one of the things I really liked. I was seeing some pictures uh, from Scale, and one of the oh, yeah? pictures uh, Steve took, uh, Jill was talking to somebody, and the la lady next to Jill was clearly had the look of like, what the fuck's up with that t-shirt? Because it said how well it's on. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw you and Strider at the Luchers booth, and I was like, God damn it, he's got a Francophile t-shirt on. It's like, all right. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he, he, he brought all the LGC t-shirts. Um... <laughs> uh, yeah, he, oh yeah, no, he, he it was great. He was mad at Jill this morning. He's like, I was supposed to wear the pink LGC shirt. <laughs> yeah, he's not. I know you're not joking. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely not. This was a conversation we had a breakfast. Hey, one of anyway, the best ways I, if you want to kick us some coin is become a Patreon. We get some, uh, couple things you can, uh, get with that, right, Joe? Oh yeah, you get a lot of cool stuff like access to our Discord, where you can hang out with us and shit post all you want. Um, you can also get access to our show notes if you're uh, giving us two fifty a week. That's the Death Note level. Uh, and of course, the best thing you get from being a patron is the pre pre super shows and a special podcast that lets you look oh, behind look the veil of Linux oh, Gamecast. There it is. You're buying data bits. <laughs> I'm I'm buying really really I'm buying really really spotty LTE is what and I'm you, buying. And you know what? You guys sent that picture upside down, so it fucking stayed upside down. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, there you are, Jules. <laughs> I'm sad. They didn't get Strider's legs because he was he was grinding my crotch the entire time. It was great. Um <laughs> Yeah. We got empty, we got Strider. Yeah, you uh you can you can check this out and see the entire travel photo booth at uh, on our Patreon. But you know what you know what we can also use a lot of hardware. This thing takes a lot to run. And so if you want to be a cool folks, you can I go know to apparently list. we need to put some funds on putting together a mobile rig. Appar hey, the mobile rig I had failed miserably. <laughs> so you know what? Maybe, maybe maybe it's time to invest in a backup one. Um, but yeah, you can go to our Amazon wish list, buy some stuff, end up on Frank's wall. It's Which you can barely see there. because it, he's hiding behind this giant monitor. And actually, that is one of the few things you can see in that entire yeah, shot. Right. <laughs> Uh, hey, we okay. got some people that we need to thank this week. Oh, yeah, we do. Um, Gronk, Gronk <laughs> Dalonka, uh, I was gonna say Gronkadonga, um, <laughs> is our brand new patron. Uh, Justin, who's in the house right now, we'll probably have him on later, uh, up to his Terrifying. Patreon. And, and, uh, George M., uh, he's uh, giving us some money over the PayPal, PayPal which is the thing you can do it's, it's if you don't like yes. Patreon. <laughs> Hey, I know this Indeed. is going to be like another plug, but we need to talk about it. That is the latest Humble Bundle 20. Yay! Everyone gets excited. Through our affiliate link. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have? We have the first, but this is a Humble Bundle, so everything in, has a Linux port unless they made a new Gianna Sisters, uh, which they didn't. Mm -hmm. We have <laughs> the first tree, Tangle Deep Among the Sleep. Uh, pay more than the average for getting over it. Tooth and Tail, not a bad game. Dream Daddy, that might be fun to stream, but oh yeah, here's the one that made me go, "You fucking what?" Um, <laughs> Ten what stinky caches for hippitus hoppitus from wildfire from the people behind the humble bundles. Ten dollars. Now, honestly, that's not a bad price for overgrowth. If we're being honest, because that's normally like what thirty no, bucks. What was it like thirty? Yeah. yeah, so it's sixty-six percent off. That's that's. Better than what you can normally get it at. And I honestly thought about picking up a couple of copies. for Out of principle, I've been unable. And like, you put your own game as the... Just, I, I, I don't like the way that smells, man. And, you know, I'm not even worried about the fact that I'm smelling something over, over the internet. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I to be fair, be you're paying show. 10 for overgrowth and everything else. And it, it is a humble indie bundle, so chances are, uh, once the first week elapses, they will have a couple of more games, usually from the previous bundle, they will add those in as well. So... I think it's fair. I have an extra key of overgrowth if anyone needs one. It's 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, 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 I'll probably pick up Overgrowth for 10 bucks. I've been interested enough in trying out that game. I just want to pay 30 bucks for it. That's too much. Yeah. That's too much. <laughs> Stay tuned next All week. Right. Okay. Uh, All right. I, KDE. I've, I've heard a lot of people tell me right to my face, uh, you're a horrible person for running closed source and video drivers and open source all the things, but not not video games because I play a lot of closed source video games and I do some mental <laughs> gymnastics where that's different somehow because reasons. <laughs> because reasons. And uh, the fine folks at Kitty Digest, uh, they had, well, they had a bit of an article that said the easiest way to gaming almost entirely, in quotes, uh, or in uh, parentheses, painlessly on Linux, use AMD. And they, the article actually does a very good job of uh, saying, yeah, you you will have the best results with the, an RX 580 or an RX 480, something along those lines. And you need to use the Padock uh, PPA, the stable version, which is also the one that Feral recommends. So, yes, that is a very good advice. And it's... Um, yeah, no, that's just generally good advice for both AMD and Intel. Uh, if you're stuck on an Intel laptop for some reason, just use the Padaka stable PPA. If you're on Ubuntu, just do it. And it's, yeah, they say that it will mostly just work out of the box and uh, they make some bold claims like the uh, open source drivers are just as performant as the AMD GPU Pro module that you have, uh, which AMD still offers a proprietary module for the AMD drivers. It's... Yeah, it's a bit of a bold claim, though I do take issue with this article because, yeah, so if you're telling people that you need to set up a third-party PPA, you're literally one command away at that point from just a sudo apt install NVIDIA driver 418 and the NVIDIA settings, and it's just a different PPA that you need to enable. So it's disingenuous to say that AMD is the easiest when in the very same article you recommend that people enable so, that third so party repo my, <laughs> my counterpoint my counter is, point is that this is all a bunch of ubuntu nonsense in the rest of the world that in the rest of the world that uses real linux distributions um i mean if you're, if you're using a relatively recent uh distribution like a current snapshot arch or fedora and you have something like a 580 or a 480 or whatever you literally can just get up and running plugging and playing um yeah, but to, to to your point, yeah, you you are right in the sense that if you're going to be enabling third party repos on your distribution of choice, it's effectively the same step for getting. Yeah, um, <laughs> for, yeah. I I I will say though, uh, developers are targeting against Rad V and not AMD GPU, so there may actually be some better performance in Rad V, uh, because you know that's actually getting attention and patches mm -hmm. and optimizations, and it makes sense. <laughs> well, you know, I'm yes. all for supporting Team Red, but yeah, don't be disingenuous with that. I mean, setting up AMD is arguably a bit more difficult than because, like, even if you're dealing, especially if you're dealing with Ubuntu, you can get the proprietary driver out of the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in, 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 in in Fedora, I mean, yeah, they they do they do have the Negativo repos for the Nvidia drivers. But I, I like like I said, if you if you have if you have an older card, definitely very very painless experience. Uh, if you got the new hotness like the Vega Seven or some of the Vega 64s, Vega 56s. Really, it's up to the distribution, right? If they're going to offer a yeah. version of Mesa or a kernel version that will give you that support. Mm -hmm. So, And if you're be if you're using Ubuntu, like the article seems to imply that you should, uh, especially KDE Neon in their case, it's, uh, yeah, you really do want to have, if you have AMD or Intel, you want to update those Mesa drivers. But it's not easier than getting an NVIDIA card up and running. You just hate freedom, Pedro. Ma ma you ma it clear. Mar marginally. <laughs> I, I, I would say it's marginally easier. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I also think a bit of education needs to be done because, you know, logic would dictate if somebody was coming off Windows or even Mac for that matter, uh, they got an AMD card, they would think, oh, I need to download the driver from AMD and they would be wrong. <laughs> Yes. A AMD yes. has proven yes, time and time again <laughs> they cannot write drivers. The AMD people are working with Mesa because they know how to write drivers. Well, mm -hmm. I would rock and roll with also, I, I was toying around with the idea of like, uh, maybe I want to play around with um, AMD, like at a 480 or something. And Strider, which is not 
technically inept, didn't have a good time out of the box with that, but he eventually got it set up and I was like, it might be an adventure for a different time. So, uh, mind test is it, it, dead. Hey, it, Long it, it, live it was a really test. good talking point at still. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, last week we got a bit of hate mail about final mind test 5.0, which was a fork of this particular version of mind test that we're talking about right now. So the major differences from version not point four point sixteen is that they changed the versioning number entirely and now it's going to be uh major minor and patch version numbers rather than zero major and minor so yeah they also have other highlights like they have an online content repository so if you have mods like entire game packs built on top of mind tests uh entire mod packs texture packs what have you uh you can get everything in one place which is nice very nice i don't know what the hell a carpathian map gen is but they have that too uh they uh did a couple of things to the mods and they also deprecated and outright broke compatibility with a bunch of things which I guess is what uh, caused that split between this version of mind test and final mind tests, because someone in Discord last week actually mentions like, yeah, uh, because uh, mind test when they changed the 5.0, they included the wrong things, and they um, they what was it? They didn't include the stuff that some people it wanted. Finally, Apparently there happened. was some he rambled drama. So long he forgot where he was going. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, apparently Praise there was the even sun. some drama around it, and I, I, if anyone has a link to that whole drama thing that happened, I, I want that. There's just not enough people that. playing Mind Test for there to be drama. Apparently, there's there just is. enough people playing. No, no, no. There, there is just enough people playing Mind Test for there to be drama. Then okay. <laughs> I thought Microsoft made it better. <laughs> nah, they, they 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 made them rewrite it in C sharp, and that that was just a no go. <laughs> v- visual right. Minecraft, that's what we need. Yeah. What do we have up next. <laughs> All, right. All right, um, Puppy Games. Uh, they released a little blog post that were saying that Basingstoke, their stealth game, is now free on Linux, and they're looking at making some other games free on Linux. And I, I my first thought was, okay, I guess their Linux sales peter out, so they figured they'd just try to get in as many people's hands. But then I read the blog post because you should read articles before commenting on them. And um, they're saying that they want to move a lot of their development over to their Patreon, uh, which I think is actually mm-hmm. a fairly decent uh, uh, early access development model. Because, yeah. you know, you, you're, you're forced to deliver, and if you don't, people stop giving you money. Um, and, yeah, um, it's it, 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 it seems like, yeah, they're, 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 try, they're trying to get some goodwill with the Linux community. Uh, they're trying to get the game out there so that people are aware of them so that they'll send the money over over Patreon. And yeah, I, I guess I was just a little overly cynical at the beginning, but I think that this is a very interesting move and I'm curious to see how it plays out for these folks. Hmm. Yeah, and it's really great to see. They do have a pay what you want if you go to the itch page to download the game. You can just say no, just take me to the downloads. But they do have a little uh, pay what you want. So if you do want to send them some cash to, you know, reward a very good move for bringing the game out to everyone on Linux for the freeze. You're very welcome to do so. Uh, I did run into a bit of a bug because I tried it out. It's like, oh, it's like um, it's got rogue-ish elements uh, in the survival genre. And it's like, okay, I like roguelikes, so I'll give it a I'll take it out for a spin. But there's a wallet item that you can use to save the game at any point. You just use the item. It'll be saved where you were supposedly but when you actually reload the game uh you go to the nether realm because the screen is all pitch black and your money is uh always increasing so what's the money clipped the left side of my screen because it usually starts on the uh, top right i went okay we're done and yeah no there's a bit of a bug there you might want to fix that <laughs> well hey man good on them you got to try stuff too and Show them some love, yeah. go download it. Let them know what you think. Before if we you, get out of here, like it, go to their Patreon. Do need to talk yep. about Cytopia. No description, website, or topics provided. And I'm really tempted to be like, up next. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a free open source retro pixel art city building game with a big focus on mods 
It's based on custom isometric rendering engine, based on SDL2, so you know it's going to work. I think it looks kind of neat. Think of like Hipster Pixel Sim City. And I mean, outside of the Hipster Pixel thing, uh, could be kind of fun to play around with, right? Maybe? Yep. Yeah, especially if you're like into making mods for stuff, like you're saying, like, hey, here's the game, go mod it, go nuts, make crazy stuff for it. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe we'll get some crazy Godzilla mods for uh, Cytopia. And <laughs> actually have like a SimCity style of game built completely um, off of this particular engine. That would be very nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, I think it's neat. Uh, there is a dev package available, which basically means you can make it run on anything. Just unpack it with Archiver and yeah, yeah, <laughs> give it the double clicks, and it'll be a thing. Didn't get a chance to try it, but it's something I might play around with. It didn't they? We, we need like uh, multiplayer SimCity. Yeah, I tried that. <laughs> okay, what we need is um, asymmetrical well SimCity, so somebody sim- can be the monster. Oh, uh, okay. I see. Oh, that, 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 would, that would actually be a really cool asynchronous game where, like, one 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 uh, for one player, it's a city builder like Sim City, and for the other person, it's Rampage. Yeah. <laughs> Me, I, I want to be the crushing debt. Mm. I, I want to be the crumbling the crumbling infrastructure that no one wants to pay to rebuild. Be quiet, America. I want to play the tsunami, <laughs> <laughs> the poop tsunami, <laughs> and on that bombshell. The Poonami? Yes. Coming up next. No chair acquisition this week. I'm going to go downstairs, get some people, and I'm going to have them sit in this chair and talk about scale so that I can eat a steak. Mm. Well, um, I flew out to California, as y'all know, because I'm in a very pink room and I have uh, Jill in the background here, uh, to go... To go uh, experience the wonders and horrors that is the SoCal Linux Expo, uh, we we set up uh, we had two booths. We had uh, the Linux Chixelle booth and the Lutris slash sort of one eight per, eight percent LGC booth. Um, and yeah, uh, I guess uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about what was going on. We got a lovely little picture album here, and some folks are gonna rotate in and give some commentary. And Alan's gonna film the reverse so you can see all of the backs of our heads. <laughs> Um, All right. so, so yeah, um, yeah, so, uh, hanging out at the Lutris booth was, uh, I mean, where, where should we get started? Should we go from the beginning of time when I arrived or when Treggy arrived? Sure. Uh, why not do it? Bring it. Uh, yeah. All, all right. Yeah. So, so Tre- Treggy got there a couple hours before I did. Uh, they picked him up. Um, then they picked me up. We went to the, they went, they went to a burger place and then they picked me up and went, we went to the same burger place, which was pretty good. Um, then I crashed at Strider's house. Uh, we smoked a lot of drugs and played a lot of video games, so that was fun. Um, and, and uh, yeah. Um, then then the convention proper. Uh, we we um actually uh one cool thing was I ran into one of the maintainers for Open Morland. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. They um. They, they came by asking about Lutris, and I'm like, hey, so we're talking about engine reimplementation. Do you know about Open World, Morwin? Oh, yeah, and I'm one of their maintainers. So I actually got his email address, so I'm going to try, try and get in contact with him afterwards and see if we can get him on the show. That would nice. be cool. Nice, nice. Um, went to a couple. Um, yeah, the, the rest of it is just chilling, hanging out with Chris and Popey and these guys. Um, yeah, we were, we were showing off a bit of what Lutris is capable of, showing uh, the god version of... Um, uh, not Raven's Cry. I was going to play Raven's Cry right now. Uh, Witcher, The Witcher Three. Um, we all, we also played a little bit of Doom. We had some Amiga emulators going on. Um, we were we were we were not quite the only gaming folks there. Uh, the System Seventy Six guys set up some Rocket League, and I think the uh, the Mario DB guys were giving away an NES Classic, so they set up like Donkey Kong at their uh, at their table. But okay. um, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, went went to some talks of very beginner friendly Godot talk and something about uh, zero mesh uh, zero zero trust networking that was a little it was it was, it was interesting. I, I got some I got some cool ideas to possibly implement. Well, I heard that um, your um, yeah. talk uh, the Godot talk was kind of like uh, <laughs> different, so, not bad. <laughs> so so the, the the talk was called Godot or Get Out, um, and. 
it was, it was, it was I, and I expected it, like maybe it was some Godot contributors who were going to talk a bit about the project. But what it happened to be was it was uh, three high school students who uh, made a video game using Godot. Um, they did all the, spri the sprites themselves. They wrote all the code in GD script. And they were talking a bit about their experience. Um, it, was very, it, was, it was very beginner friendly. Although I did ask him at the end, hey, did you develop this under Linux? No, we developed it under Windows. Sad. Then you threw him um, into traffic. Understood. <laughs> yeah. yeah and then, then, Don't then, get then angry, people. I mean, it's a Canadian custom. He has to honor his yeah, traditions. It, indeed. And there are no I'll moose around, with, uh, so traffic it is. Well, he bit him first. I no, mean, he's, no, he's no, 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 no moose. <laughs> Lot, lots of meth heads, though. Method Charlie <laughs> in LA. Him, right. him and his voguing. So Jordan, who's our and, first and, victim? And his open sores on his face. So um, I guess I guess uh, Jill has some stuff she wants to say. She's been he's been working her ass off for the past right. couple days running the Linux Chicks booth. So she gets my gross head phones. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jill. What's going on? You got five minutes. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I've been uh, doing lots of interviewing on the floor for LGC and LWW. So I've interviewed uh, interviewed Popey and um, Emma from System76 and um, uh, uh, Krita and Inkscape. I'm going to be interviewing GitLab tomorrow and uh, some other smaller projects, uh, developers from other smaller projects that I am you know really have passion about. So and just, also, are you just like walking up, like throwing your mic on the floor and going, do you know who I am? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so I usually, what, what I've been doing is um, I go up and I tell them about my show if they don't already know. And most of everyone there already knows. So, and they're happy to be interviewed for LWW. And then I make sure to, to tell them I'm going to, I do a little interview on the, on uh, a nice interview on the floor and then I give him my business card and and say we want you on the show proper uh, a live live interview and they've all said yes <laughs> okay so all that's right. really awesome <laughs> yeah so we, we can all interview them together and um, um the other thing i'm doing in between interviewing everyone is uh working the linux chicks la booth and it's been wonderful we've gotten uh we we have our project was a, it's a raspberry pi photo booth um we created a raspberry pi photo booth essentially and um people can the community can go up and take pictures of themselves with giant inflatable penguins or uh penguin masks and um all the families and kids so really you got like a little that. rng like every third or fourth picture you just put some spooky shit behind there to fuck with them Yes, yes, we've done a lot of that. Yes, and we've done photo bombs with, with the Linux Game Cast crew, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so it that was really neat. And not only what, what's really cool about it is the software we're using, um, um, we set up a, a printer on it. So it actually prints a old-fashioned picture like it what you would have at a real photo booth in the carnival you should have went old school you should have like dug out like a usb dot matrix printer yeah <laughs> yes that would have been really cool <laughs> so did you guys have fun everything really worked smooth uh we followed yes as you were going through picking everybody up we, we have some pictures there for you watching the uh mm -hmm. yes yes version. Oh, we're going to have uh, probably a thousand pictures by the time we're done. That's uh, Treggy arriving in L.A. on Monday. And then we had uh, Jordan's ar arrival. And that was amazing. And we took him around Los Angeles. We went to SpaceX and um, down to the beach near where I live. And uh, took him out to a lot of good Mexican restaurants. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know that's something they, they both they both don't have here and uh and then empty arrived on wednesday um he had been at scale and joined us last year and that was so exciting so i was so happy to have empty back he's amazing and it's just been so cool meeting the lgc um co-host who i work with every week now on the shows just meeting them in person it's just been really wonderful <laughs> 
And one of my highlights is uh, having uh, Jordan in my studio, <laughs> so my broadcasting <laughs> studio. So that was really cool. <laughs> and I'm so busy, you know, at scale doing the interviewing and doing the Linux Chicks booth. I'm literally, you know, bouncing back and forth um, uh, that I don't have time to go to the talks. But the beauty of scale is that um, everything is recorded on YouTube. In fact, they've already uploaded um, several several days worth of videos on YouTube. So I spend several months after scale watching all the vid videos of all the talks I wanted to see. And it was amazing. Okay. On Saturday, there were 16 tracks. That was just, it, it's huge. <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm looking forward to listening, you know, going through all those, those videos, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Pretty sweet, and still nice. more to come. All right, we need our next yes. victim. Who do we have? Yes, we do. Um, uh, Nicole, would you like to speak? Uh, <laughs> no one's no one's waiting to speak. Everyone, <laughs> Everyone got asleep. bored and walked there away. Go, There's <laughs> empty. Okay, how does this thing even work? You put them in your ears. You put both of them in to, to hear pretty well. So. All right. Okay, what's up? Can you say something? No. Hello. I'm Hello? Not saying anything. <laughs> no. You're hearing shit again. It's too late. <laughs> the voice is in your head. <laughs> One Michael Tehan, ladies and gentlemen. This is not his first trip to scale. Me. This is his second. You showed up. How did it go? What did you see? What terrified you? What turned you on a little bit? Well, the nice part is like I'm on vacation right now, and I got an exhibitor pass, but I don't really have a booth. Uh huh. I'm just kind of like floating around, <laughs> checking everything out. You know, I hung out at the Lutris booth a lot, but at the same time, there were so many great talks just on so many like on everything. The security track was particularly um, interesting. This year. Security track. Other than that, I've yeah, they have like eight different eight different tracks, ten different tracks of talks going on all at the same time. So there's absolutely no way to see everything. So what did you guys think yeah, about the uh, yeah. Lutris booth? Well, it was kind of disappointing that they only did The Witcher 3 the whole time. I was like, Matthew, <laughs> something, anything. Dude, but, they should have played well, Deus Ex with Lutris to show off Linux gaming. <laughs> it's was, it was pretty bad, actually. Some guy some guy who knew what was in the cutscene at the beginning of The Witcher 3 quit out of our save game and started a new game mm. so that he got the opening <laughs> intro movie going again. We were just like, oh, I hope no one comes by right now. Lovely. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but then we put on doom and killed some demons and that was good so you know all right it seems like it's working out pretty well the, 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 the house idea here is probably the best thing we've we've come up with yet that was a genius move on whoever came up with the ideas part that's probably better than so you, <laughs> you've basically uh started uh taking over uh strider's place at this point well, uh <laughs> Strider's place is far too small for the number of people we have here. Uh, so we got this house in Pasadena. It's like maybe 10 minutes from the convention center instead of, you know, a, a 45 minute slog through traffic. All right. And okay. It's cheaper than a hotel. I think we, I think we had 11 people in here. Was that, is that the right number? 11, 12, 11, 12 something like that. That's, that's pretty good for a house. So anyway, so there's a significant good, amount and, uh, of you all there. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I can uh, smell it from here. Yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to pass this along, and uh, I know we got Justin here, so um, good chatting with you, fellas. Go. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Mac Geek. <laughs> See, he's not an audiophile. <laughs> no, no, no. He's both angered and confused hey, by earbuds. Hey, what's going on, Justin? So, hey, uh, Pedro, how are you guys doing? Horrible. It's miserable. <laughs> Looking the wrong way. My bad. My bad. <laughs> don't worry about it. The people listening on audio won't know, but they do now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how far did you drive? You you came down from a moment, didn't you, upstate? Yeah, um, 740 miles, 13 hours, doing it again at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Oh, okay. That's a bit of a weekend. <laughs> It was so worth it. Scale is awesome. Everyone here is awesome. I had four job interviews at Scale yesterday. 
So okay, I had, that's pretty IBM. good. <laughs> IBM interviewed me. Um, I had dinner with the whole System seventy six crew, which was pretty awesome. So. Yeah. Pretty good. Did you see anything interesting, they... exciting, terrifying, mesmerizing? Um, the whole event was terrifying because I felt like I was the only uh, Windows sysadmin in the entire room. Oh, I highly <laughs> doubt that. Yeah, there was probably a couple of more hanging around. That That's a vacation yeah, was... for a Windows sysadmin. They're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> it felt like vacation. Um, I currently have around 200 work emails, so uh, that will be my Monday, digging through emails. That sounds pretty sweet. Uh, you going to come back next year? I'm going to drag the wife down next year. Even if she doesn't want to come, she's coming. <laughs> that sounds okay. like a brilliant idea. Make sure you film it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, better yet, have her film it. <laughs> Well, my wife's a level two black belt in Krama Gauss, so it might not end well for me. Maybe. So. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. I got a little faith in you, man. You might be, might be able to hold mm -hmm. your own. All right. That's cool. Who do we yeah. got up next? Someone. Who knows? <laughs> Take care, guys. Someone is coming. <laughs> ha. <laughs> I knew by a process of elimination I'd get to ah. Alan. <laughs> Uh, Not that one. No, <laughs> the nasty ones. Someone tell Alan it's the Bluetooth ones. This is all an elaborate <laughs> joke to give everyone an ear infection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we did it. We got him to put him in his ears. That's so nasty. Yep. Gross. <laughs> um. <laughs> ah, intermingling earwax. So, Alan, how is scale for you? <laughs> Oh, it's been going crazy. Uh, you've been working the camera. You've basically been uh, Mr. Meta instead of Mr. Alert, as usual, because you've been filming the camera that's been, you know, recording the show the whole time. So, <laughs> hey, right. What, do you yeah. got a problem with people who like to watch, Pedro? I can, I can relate to the voyeuristic tendencies. No, it's not, but, no, uh, no Pedro, it's not even the voyeuristic <laughs> thing. If you're used to watching the show, sometimes being there in person is a little too real. If you're watching it through the LCD, it's more like watching the show. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> so uh, from all the footage that you managed to get uh, thus far, which one was uh, the one you enjoyed the most? Yes, which Alan? one footage? Yes. Uh... <laughs> like interview situation no, anything the uh interview outtake with uh joe and jordan okay okay <laughs> go on share the deets nope. <laughs> uh well uh oh jordan or er, jill uh mispronounced jordan's last name and he just <laughs> stuffed and went off ah <laughs> uh, yes swing <laughs> Cock smasher. I mean, it's <laughs> practically prime. Yeah. <laughs> so how many more days of scale, man? Uh, we just have uh, one more day tomorrow. One more day? Is there anything like big going no. on tomorrow? Uh, not really. I think things start winding down. Uh, the expo floor is only open for half of the day. Half the day? What was going on with like the uh, launcher thing outside? Oh, uh, yeah, the, uh, America's Got Talent is going on. They're finally going right to kill them. Door. Oh. <laughs> I guess. Did, did they hold, like, a lotto? You could be like, Paul. <laughs> that's horrible. Uh, all right, that's cool. Well, hey, man, thanks for recording. What do you think is going to be the most nightmarish thing for me to try to edit and stitch together? Oh. That's not a good sound. <laughs> that means there's a lot. <laughs> there is. Well, I already assumed that there are going to be multiple occasions of dealing with separate audio and video sources. <laughs> yeah, uh... That not so much, actually. I have the microphone like directly attached to the camera. Oh, that's no fun. <laughs> yeah. 
Bluetooth mic throw it at people. Catch. <laughs> now say things. <laughs> Wake up. Come. <laughs> All right, do we get anybody else left to torture? Uh, yeah, we got... Uh, who we got the left to... <laughs> yeah, uh, see if Strider yeah, wants to come back in. <laughs> All right. All right. I don't want to lose my face. Oh, we also got uh, Nicole here. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Scale. Hello. Hi. <laughs> What's going on? So, what did you find interesting at scale this year? So, this is my fourth scale. Oh, shit. And I almost exclusively stay in the expo hall because I really love talking to the organizations and finding out why open source is so powerful to them. Mm -hmm. And to many of them, it's because they see the human inside technology. So many people th see technology and they think of it as so cold logic, but it's really about people and making li people's lives better. And that's what really drew me to tech. So open source is kind of like the Borg. It eats humans. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So well, Nicole, how long have you been with the I don't the, get uh, hired to make LA. analogies, man. Come on. <laughs> Five years, I think. Five years? All right. <laughs> yeah, I believe around four or five years. All right. Okay. okay. So uh, what did you think of Jill all of a sudden going, oh, these Linux game cast guys, you should totally meet them. They're totally awesome. There's one coming for <laughs> scale. So we know Jill's view on the matter. How did you and the rest of the Linux girls react? <laughs> Probably... I was so excited. Yeah. I wish everyone could come every single year and we could just have this huge house party. Like it's it's been wonderful. I mean the whole open source community is, is so friendly. Uh last night we stayed up until like 1.30 playing role playing games and it was it was great. I love I love geeking out with other geeks. <laughs> So when you were talking okay. about the hall, what's going on there? Like, how how is scale split up? Like, is so it... there's the expo hall. Well, the Pasadena Convention Center is in two separate buildings. Okay, so it's right. already confusing. In one building, they have a few lecture halls, and then the expo. That's usually where I stay. And in the other one, they just have smaller rooms where they could have. Smaller, more intimate talks. No, I, 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 I was having a good time. I'm watching Jordan, and I was like, oh, someone told Jordan to get in the corner. I was... So, with, with like, the different talks, I mean, so Strider has his Luchas booth, and Linux 6, you guys, have, is that just, like, by itself? Then there's, like, okay, part B is where everyone's giving talks all day. Exactly. The the talks are separate from the expo halls. Mm. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, how many people this year did you have at the uh, Linux Chicks LA booth? If you have an idea. <laughs> yeah, they get a clicker, Pedro. Felt like, sometimes it felt like there were 15 <laughs> yeah, yeah. of us. All right. Okay. A lot of people. A lot of people want to come and talk to us and... I mean, we're fun. We're fun people. <laughs> Not too scary. So, so, well, sometimes I smile at people and they give me this weird look and then they shuffle away. And I'm like, what did I do? Do not run. We are your friends. Like, am I aggressively smiling? Aggressively <laughs> smiling. I think I that's just I... when you find the normies, as some people call them, and you have a geek that's genuinely happy. It's like, oh, look, check it out. There's people that actually want to talk to me. And it's like, oh, that's genuine happiness. I'm going to run away now. <laughs> Pedro, you just fear human contact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some people are really responsive. Like, they, they come, they want to chat forever. That's great. But I, I don't know why. That's fine. Some people, you, you and it's be... only when it's just me. 
This is just too. I don't know. Yeah. When you think about it, though, like when you're out, like just hanging out and you're walking, it's like personal experience. If I'm walking by somebody and they just look at me and smile, I'm like, oh shit, where's this going? <laughs> it's really? like, where do you I, know me from? I, yeah, it, this I runs through my head. I was like, and people oh. tend to smile at me, back at me. Because smiling's my default face. Default like, this face. isn't happiness. Is it also this, your war face? This isn't happiness. This <laughs> is my happy face. <laughs> Right on. I don't know. Uh, people could be like that. I, I have don't... resting smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well played. <laughs> it's better than your default state being mildly irritated. Unless your default state is mildly irritated and you're just hiding it. Very successful. <laughs> okay, I have, a, I have the smiling face and then I have like... If you don't back up, you're going to die. You don't back up. <laughs> no in between. <laughs> no in between. All right. Yeah, cool. You're dead to me face. Okay, I saw a Truggy showing up yeah. there. You want to pass him the uh, Truggy screwed the up. headset? We know he's up there. Okay, Truggy. I'm not going to go Nice talking to you. Oh, he's not. Steve. Oh, we got Steve. Oh, we got Steve. All right, cool. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Hello, Steve. Steve, all right. Nobody's listening. Just between me and you, who smells the worst? I know, this is a tough one. Not because nobody smells, because I said the worst. And there's like some top three contenders this year. Uh, I'll just give it collectively to DevOps, okay? DevOps? DevOps. Oh, I got you. <laughs> I mean, you might as well just point at Jordan. I mean, you're not going to do it. Oh, but uh, uh, never fear. Oh, I did have bring something here. We are. We're going to rectify the situation. And uh, we are bringing a banana to scale. There we go. Yes. Banana we need a banana scale. for scale. I'm glad somebody did that. Jordan was really upset. That it didn't click. <laughs> so okay, I, so I don't know why no one thought of it before because well, there is a there is a bunch of us. So mm-hmm. but, you know. as a uh, as the one you know non Linux geek in the mix of all those people, how do you feel? <laughs> well, I'm the booth babe. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> yes, oh, we've the, established that. So we established that last year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, at a, I'm at a booth run by women, and uh, I'm standing there, and I don't know a thing. Uh, you know. know <laughs> and people they, approach you. It's like, yeah. okay, so what do you do with the Linux Chicks LA? It's like, I'm here for my pretty looks. <laughs> no, yeah. Actually, you know, it's, it's really fun. And sometimes it's, it's actually very useful to not know a lot like um i actually helped get some of the interviews lined up today for jill um because i asked the simplest most innocent questions about their project using the old you know, sympathy and card were... you're like oh yes <laughs> <laughs> okay I'll, I'll do your show little buddy <laughs> they give you a hug okay, so i have a, a, a i have a resting sympathy face um, <laughs> so it's going to be a thing now. It's illegal in four states. So I love to use it. <laughs> no, but it is always a treat. And uh, like Nicole said, it's uh, there's so many more stories about other than just the minutia of the code. Um, again, the doctors are trying to use the technology to do amazing things and help people. It was small projects. There's, there's so much hope at this place. And that's really neat. All these people come together and they finally... Or amongst like-minded people and can promote themselves amongst the people who who matter. Um, no, right. Look at the, yeah, I mean, not to mention uh, Justin talked about his job interviews. It's amazing. He was too modest to say it, but one of the companies is flying him to their headquarters. Oh, nice, um, nice. <laughs> so, yeah. um, on a scale of so, one to ten, so he better up his Patreon. There you go. <laughs> Man, you're all about money, Steve. Some of us want the human connection, and we're concerned about the people, not the money. Well, I was pandering directly to you, Van. Um, so I can get back to my normal self, I suppose. Um, just trying to shill for you. Uh, 
Um, okay, so no, as I, I don't the, know how uh, to visually do that to the joke that JPEG Pedro. So you take the next one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as the toy person, uh, were there any screen. like really nice gadgets that you saw that you really enjoyed and you want to play with at uh, scale? Uh, the one talk that I made sure that I attended um, is the JPL Open Rover program. Where they are making a replica of the uh, Curiosity of Mars 2020 rover. Yeah, we talked about that on Weekly Daily. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, the the people who are doing the the sort of the beta build for JPL were here with two of the rovers to show off. Okay. Yeah, there's a there was a high powered one too. And it's mm -hmm. it's really neat to hear them talk about all the different ways they had to solve problems. They're trying to make it cheaper. I think the first robot, yeah, was twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, JPL's not even done building those yet, and the uh, San Gabriel Valley Linux Users Group, I think I got that right, um, or an offshoot thereof, uh, had theirs together and working, and were able to help nice. influence JPL's design. Um, and and <clears throat> yes, yeah, so as, as, as a toy guy, I ended up talking and asking them some questions afterwards and had a nice conversation. Um, and it's a really fun project, because once they get the robots built, they actually change, they can change the wheel hubs um you know with the name of the school and take it for over there for education purposes and uh, amongst other things yeah so it's really there's stuff around that's uh, everywhere and i think there's another uh jpl or nasa talk this weekend as well so something for okay. Steve's husband did you wacky lot have a good time at spacex or was it just like hey let's go stand in front of the uh falcon rocket and take an upside down picture <laughs> it's it's one of those things where in, in real life, yeah, it, it seems like that's all it would be. And to a certain extent, yeah, we could have been standing in front of a water tower. But it is different when you see it in real life because you realize that little pencils thing you see landing backwards on the barge is big. Mm -hmm. It's impressive. And that's, that singular piece of hardware is the actual uh, first ever successfully landed orbital class booster. So that's a huge piece of history. It's and smoke and mirrors, man. NASA told house. me it couldn't be done. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag, <laughs> hashtag flat Mars. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah that's the ultimate though, twist. I... It's not the Earth. It's Mars that's flat. I know. We got to get off this topic, and we got we got to chase Steve off because we're talking about space. Yeah. And we only got like ten more minutes. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to say it's kind of cool seeing what the other, uh, what my living room looks like from the other side. <laughs> Oh, neat. Okay. Oh, I see you on the couch later. Okay. Bye. It looks exactly like the damn show, Steve. <laughs> mm. oh, yeah, fun. we could totally have Steve on for the whole show. <laughs> oh, abso absolutely. You want to you wanna geek out with the guy. He's the, he's the guy to do it with. All right. Is that going to be a continuation or the end of our Yeah, uh, Strider said he's good. Uh, no one else wanted to come up. Brilliant. Uh, so Fine. We didn't want to talk to him anyway. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen. I so, listen, I've been, I've been talking to the guy nonstop. I'm saying his voice. I, 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 <laughs> I, want, I want you to whisper sweet nothings into my ear. Not going to lie. I, I was enjoy watching you fidget in the corner. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we actually forgot to ask Empty what exactly happened with the VLC brigade. Oh, uh, yeah, apparent, apparent. so, so that, so, you know, the, the, the VLC, uh, logo is like the traffic cone, right? So they had a bunch of like plush traffic cone hats and they're wearing them. And apparently empty called one of them, the safety wizard. And, uh, they were, they were, they were not too pleased about that. Do you think somebody's going to bed tonight and they're like, I'm not a safety wizard. I want to be the safety wizard. What the hell are you talking about? Or do you about? think, like, behind closed doors is like, call me the safety wizard. I am the safety <laughs> wizard. Right. Yeah, that, 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 that's where my brain went. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right, thus concludes our scale 17 coverage. Yep. Yeah. Scale extravaganza. Coming up next. We got, we got a little bit of hate mail from Orin about Sandy. Hmm. And if for some reason you didn't get to go to scale this year, but you'd like to go next year, and maybe you even have an idea for a talk that you'd like to make. Are you going to do a talk next year, Pedro? Go Pedro, there. What, what's your talk going to be on? Uh, I don't know. Someone in Discord the other day was saying that I should do one about Dark Souls. This is like going for an hour about Dark Souls. It's like, I could. <laughs> 
But I don't know, no, the thing about you... Dark Souls, every time I play it, it makes my butt itch. <laughs> if you uh, well, if playing Dark Souls gives you a butt itch, feel free to head on over to linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button, you fill out the form, you let us know how exactly your butt itches. Is it on one of the cheeks? Is it in the crack? Is it right near your butthole? You need to uh, give us all the details because. Well, Lord knows we kind of need something for this particular segment because y'all don't uh, send a lot of hate mail our way for some reason. Oh, we get it, baby. It's just, (laughs) we don't do the low effort (laughs) shit. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We we, we only take that prime grade A trolling that is just so rare these days. I mean, we we do the good stuff and every now and then we do one. Yeah, there's or this week. Like like this week. He he, 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 He writes... End me. End me, end me, please. Won't you end me? Kill me. Oh, please. Won't you kill me? Jordan, why do people who have absolutely no idea how software works think they have a better understanding of the software than the people who do? I don't know. Actually made the software? Why are there so many armchair experts in the FOSS community who are BTW hypocrites to the bone? The typical, I'm very security oriented and I prioritize privacy, but I prefer to use Windows in my personal life. Notice douchey McNozzle didn't mention anything about work. Also, why do I seem to attract these kinds of people? Also, Sandy, if you're seeing this, please adopt me, ooh. ooh. Love, Orn. Well, and, and if you want to take this? Where, where's Orn currently at? I think he's still in Stockholm. He's in Sweden. So, yeah. Swedish are basically uh, pink Eskimos, right? Yeah, they're, 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 uh, they're offshoot Germans. They're, they're kind of weird. <laughs> hi sweden please let me in your country i want to live there one day <laughs> yeah if that doesn't get you blacklisted i want to move there too uh, uh, <laughs> i don't know man so w- w- what do you think Gordon's trying to say he's having a problem with windows people or he's just having a problem with like privacy focused I- people I, I I think it's a little bit of both. Now, to be to be fair, um, the the people who actually the people who actually do security under Windows do know what the fuck they're talking about because they are daily drivering one of the most backdoored holy OSs on the face of the planet. Mm. So they better know what they're doing to get their paycheck. Um, that's that said, yeah, a lot of a lot of privacy folks don't uh, don't end up using Linux, which I find quite odd. Uh, I don't I don't necessarily think it's hypocritical. I think it's just lack of education. Um, uh, or just I, laziness because they buy a laptop, it comes preloaded in Windows, like eh, whatever. But there's also like the levels and, of privacy, even when you're talking about like laptops, you know, you do have people that are full metal stallmen, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, they, they, they only use open platforms, um, yeah. Like, e- e- even so, do, do, you, do you do full encryption on your laptop, full disk encryption on your laptops? Sweet, yeah. the fuck all no. I I do. <laughs> see, see, like there, there's all sorts of paranoid shit you can do to harden your box, but a lot of it is just inconvenient. And a lot of a lot of people who are security minded are okay taking the risk because they know that other more risky behavior will get them in trouble a lot faster than leaving their disk unencrypted. Yeah, I, I'm kind of like a fatalist, though. It's like I assume any alphabet agency that wants my shit has got it. Oh yeah. Well, you remember those slides? SSL, those NSA slides. SSL <laughs> added and removed here. Oh boy, they can just do that, can't they? Yeah, right. they can. Yep. <laughs> Wait, once you get the grass, with their bending fiber optics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Come on. I think we're good. Mm-hmm. Uh, as as for Sandy adopting you, dude has three kids already. Do you think? I think I think he's going for five because yeah. he wants to be able to say, "I got five kids to feed," because he's a really big fan. Total Recall. But <laughs> he wants to grow a sentient chest tumor. I mean, he already did. Ah, damn! That boy's he's, always he's, ahead he's, of the he, curve. He's wor- he's working on that third booby now. One day, one day. <laughs> mm, sexy Sandy. <laughs> Very beautiful people. Thanks for sticking with us. We made it through. Uh, send us some uh, thoughts, hints, allegations, and all that other crazy stuff. But you can't do it right now. You have to do it next week when uh, yes. we get to that. Because indeed, maybe that's the wrong damn song. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> there we go. That bombshell.
You've sent through another fine, glorious, delightful Acer commercial. And I want to thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Brought to you by Acer. <laughs> Brought to you by <laughs> Send me some monitors. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, I'm at Vince Stone. I'm just at, I think I'm at Vince Stone on Mastodon, mass.longscamecast.com. I'm on Twitter and all that fun stuff. I'll get back to you. It's easy. It's just at Reply Me in our Discord. I'm always in there or I'm around. I read things occasionally. Yeah, I'm Jordan Swung. I'm in Pasadena for another day or so. So if you want to come by scale, give me a hug. I will break your ribs. You can follow me otherwise at The Burning Fool on Twitter, plus Jordan Swung on Google Plus until they kill that in a couple weeks. And on our Mastodon at Frojo at mass.mixgamecast.com. And I am Pedro Mateos. You probably won't see me going out too often because I'm well I like playing computer games but hey if you want to you know shoot the shit and uh, argue with me on Twitter you can find me that's at unaccounted for there's the link right there that's just the thing you need to look for it's yeah I'm totally down for some arguments on over the internet <laughs> mm-hmm. or, <laughs> I, 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 I mean I, ne- next year we're getting a cardboard standy of Pedro just so we can carry him around and take photos with them I <laughs> can make that happen, actually. I, I'm very good friends with somebody who has the technology to print those things whenever you need them. Make it so, number one. Fuck. Okay, MK. I'll get a full body picture then. How about we roll some full body credits? <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Some, Fine. Some, some rich, earthy, full bodied credits. Mmm. Taste of dirt. Tastes good. <laughs> Ah, whoa, whoa. No, I heard it I, was an I heard absolutely scalarific condition. <laughs> uh, let's yeah. thank our executive producers, our theorist, Fox Dog, and Atomic Mike G. Bar, Brian, Trump, Savin, Aldius, Ablo, Mackie. We even talked to some of them. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Mackie, Mackie, shut up. <laughs> Empty was here. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Tr- why Turkey, is. Turkey's around somewhere. Mirror, what are the random pictures from? I don't, I don't know. I can go downstairs and ask him because he's here. Um, I don't. No, know. I think, I think, uh, you know what? I, I, I've, I've thought better of it. Never mind. Good, good, good man, good man. <laughs> we see you have not smoked yourself, retarded. Yep, nope. Oh, oh I, I, I have, but I'm an idiot savant. Not from lack of trying. <laughs> it is Thank California, you, after all. <laughs> Actually, didn't uh, uh, didn't the UK just legalize cannabis for medical use? Eh, like on a Tuesday it's after four. Going up for approval. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Start, start smoking weed, Pedro. Yes. <laughs> Listen, you need all I the help you can get. Dinefire. My body we doesn't love you. like the... Yeah. <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>